hi everyone last film of 2020 and yes what a lot to reflect on anyway I thought I would put some twinkly lights on even though it's still the day but still looks pretty and my favorite dress from last year which was from um, me and M it's quite long and cozy and comfy but still sparkly that's kind of well, what I want anyway. <laughs> Comfort and a bit of glamour. That suits me perfectly. And I thought I'd do some old favourites that I've loved through the year and a couple of new things just to show you what my Christmas look will be. I'm trying to get really organised and categorise everything, get really tidy before I finish up for the year, which will probably be about the 22nd of December, I think. Um, so my base of the year is definitely Synchro Skin by Shiseido. And I'm shade 330 and the reason I love this foundation is that it feels super light but it covers my skin like a dream. Um, I also love the glow one which you know and I use that sort of more in the summer. I can put the glow in this product um, where I want the glow but it, for me um, it just tidies up my skin really quickly, efficiently and effectively and it doesn't feel heavy. So for me that's a 10 out of 10. So how are you all doing? Are you all kind of set for Christmas? What are your plans? My Christmas gift is the gift of my mum being able to come and stay with us so she won't be by herself because if she wasn't with us, quite frankly, it wouldn't be Christmas. So that is what I'm grateful for this Christmas. Everything else is a bonus as long as everyone stays safe and well. So quick and efficient, and I can chuck that on in the morning and pretty much last all day. Um, take it down on my neck, and sometimes if I'm feeling a little bit uneven, just a little bit on the chest there, you see how that just evens everything out just a little bit better. Now, um, Max Factor Face Finity All Day Flawless Concealer. This is 020. Again, this has the touch-proof technology. We really need it in here and in here. Um, which means that it moves with my face because my face moves a lot as it should um, and it stays put so it kind of is sort of resistant to sort of um, anything sort of rubbing on it it lasts all day it's a really really good formula as is the all day flawless foundation which goes with it but I just particularly like this concealer like I said it just works well with the skin it doesn't crack and it stays put. So just in those areas where you want to be a little bit lighter to give yourself a little bit, gosh, I look tired, don't I? Um, I am tired, actually. <laughs> I'm sure we're all a bit tired, aren't we? Um, anyway, I'm going to lift myself with the makeup. So I'm not gonna put any powder yet. I'm probably gonna wait, but I can't look at myself anymore until I put a little bit of blush on, if you don't mind, first. So I'm going to use my trusty um, it's called Primer Infused Shimmer Blush. Um, I'll have to list the colour below. Sorry, it's come off and my eyes are honestly spending so much more time on a computer. It's e.l.f. Um, I can't see the colour. It'll be on the list. Um, and I'm just going to use a little brush and just place this on the sort of apples of my cheeks just to give me... There we are. Oh, just a bit more of a healthy, more human look whilst I decorate my eyes for you all. Um, just going to be simple and it's going to be sparkly and it's going to be easy to recreate. Um, I just wanted to put a little bit of blush on. Now, I didn't powder obviously, but the, um, the foundation um, isn't too wet so it sits on my skin easily. Just gives a nice little winter flush there. Lovely. Okay, so definitely my favourite brow product was the Brow Blade or is the Brow Blade um, from Urban Decay. And just before I do my brows, I'm just going to make sure that I haven't got any either foundation, see, um, or moisturiser um, in them because it slips a little bit when I put the ink on. The only thing is it doesn't have um, uh, a little brow comb, so I'll just use the Max Factor one there just to lift that up. But I guess if it's double-ended, it can't be triple-ended, can it? It's a completely different shape. I need to do my brows. I need to put... Um, some of the rapid brow on my right brow, my left brow. <laughs> see, see what's happening. Um, and I'm gonna try and do that before I film again for you guys in January. But in the meantime, I'm just going to use a little bit of the ink just to fake it. 
and pop in a few little secret brows there. I just like it because it's so, so delicate. I don't know whether I'm actually losing my eyebrow hair or it's just the pattern of growth, we'll see. But the rapid brow is actually sat right by my bed, so there's no excuse, is there? So for the tail, I like to use the ink and then I will fill in just with a bit of depth. But for this tail where I've got no hair whatsoever, it really helps just to give me a little bit of length and it stays put and I like the way that I can be a little bit sort of haphazard with it so it sort of looks like I've got lots of eyebrows, which I don't. I'm just going to pull it down a little bit there. Such a good product and it just, it's, like I've said before with this, it's like the delivery system is so good so you don't have to store it with the ink down like some of them. Um, you can uh, just put it in your makeup bag and then the ink comes out really easily. So I'm using the coal just to pull my eyebrows down because they sit quite high in my forehead. Um, so if I just bring it down rather than lift it up at the point, it kind of anchors it a little bit better. So the coal pencil of this brow product really helps just to get a little bit of a stronger shape. There we go, good to go. Um, if your brows are low to your eye, do the opposite and take it from the top and bring it up. So however you need to manipulate your face, you do it and just use the darker shade of the product, i.e. the coal, and then use the ink um, on the top bit so it just looks a little bit softer and then it kind of has that sort of like graduation to it. <clears throat> I really do have a frog in my throat. I'm going to join you with a cup of coffee. Mm. All right, I did a really lovely campaign with Trini London um, and they asked me to um, showcase some of their new metallic eyeshadows called italics and I um, showed everyone how to use Minerva and this is Fortuna it's nice look at that with the sparkly lights so beautiful and I've really enjoyed using it you know how some of these sparkly ones you can put them in and then it just fragments everywhere this is really good in terms of being quite compact and you can use it with your finger or a brush see that's really kind of quite strong isn't it um, and it's a really nice shade. It's not too light um, and it gives enough depth to my eye to create a little bit of a socket. So I don't need to use anything else to kind of shape my socket. Whereas some of these metallic ones are so beautiful, but they're so delicate. They kind of just create a flatness where as you can see, this gives me a nice indentation to my socket. And the good thing is unlike the ones that I used to use, Stila, which I absolutely loved. It did tend to drop, sort of when I came back from a night out, or whatever, at work or whatever, I do like a bit of sparkle, it was down my face. Just a few little particles, but it used to annoy me, because obviously those little things would annoy me. But without blending, you see how nice that is? I might just do a little bit of blending just to soften the edge with another brush. But uh, you get a small amount of playtime and then it sets. Lovely. And I'm just going to keep that at the top. That's enough for me. And I'm going to use lots and lots of mascara. I'm going to use a new mascara actually and try it with you. They say the primer is like wearing a pair of Spanx. Kind of adds real structure and length to your lashes. So we'll see, right? We'll see. It's called Code Beautiful. Yeah, so Trini's got four or five, four colours. One, the cooler one, the Minerva one, which I love. Um, and it's lovely for the day because I love those kind of grey taupey tones. This is my favourite for the night. And I didn't want to kind of match the gold with the gold. I just wanted to kind of keep it this lovely pewter tone. And this is all you need, I think, just to update your makeup. It's a real cross between sort of a shadow and a soft metallic. And I really like it. I'm not going to put it underneath because I'm going to go for a slightly stronger lip. Um, so this is Code Beautiful. This one here and this one here. Now I believe the blue one is the primer. Okay, yep, definitely it's a primer because it's this kind of shade. Let's see what happens. Nice brush, skinny at the tip. I can get my lashes all the way through the wand without it touching my lid, which is key, right? Go in again and let's go underneath as well. I tend not to bother putting primer 
on my lower lashes because I sort of want the lift but because I want this to be quite a spidery um, open-eyed Christmassy look I'm going to do that on the tip too and we'll see what effect we get tripping over my words today don't know whether you can hear that bubbling in the background that's my um, Neom oil diffuser I normally turn it off for filming my friend Zoe who helps me with my films says oh what's your sound you're not doing this you're not doing that um, so if you can hear the bubbling I've got a lovely lovely fragrance it's geranium and lavender in my office and I've found it's so helpful because I've been sat here quite a lot doing my emails and sorting bits and bobs out much more than I'd used to and because I get dry skin having the extra moisture in the air has been really beneficial right flutter 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 let's go in with the mascara I've got the information here actually Forget fake lashes, spanks to your little black dress. Mascara primer extends the shortest of lashes. It's award-winning pre-mascara lash plumper will keep them nourished, nurtured and conditioned. Let's see. Yep, a lovely, nice skinny brush again. And it's a bristle brush. So that means that you get lots of mascara on, but delicately. Good first coat. Oh, maybe I'm going to be a bit sort of Daisy the cow with this, which, you know, <laughs> is never a bad thing, I guess, if you're a mascara lover or lash lover like me. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, anyone who wants to extend their lash, sometimes a thing with these, oh, look at that, that's very effective. Some of the things, um, some of the primers that you can get, um, and then mixed with the mascara can end up making your lashes like really cloggy. But because they've used the bristles rather than the molded mascara ones, this works very well. I believe it's a British brand, it's won loads of awards. It's cruelty free and vegan. Um, the lady's got in contact with me over uh, Instagram. Very nice, so I thought I'd try this. I've absolutely loved that Honest Beauty mascara, haven't I, this year? I don't know if any of you have tried it. Um, that's been a real winner for me. It'll be interesting to see what this mascara does without the primer as well, but there we go. Okay, let's get that on. Now what I might do actually, just to add a little bit more drama-rama, I'm going to put a little bit of the Fortuna just in my tear duct. Oh, now I've ruined mascara. <sighs> see, it's going so well, girls, so well. Just drag that through. Yeah, bristle mascara wands are great, preventing the mascara from overloading. Okay, lovely. So I'm going to use the little tip of the cotton bud, just on the point, and I'm just going to press it in there. Yeah, I think that will look really pretty. I don't want to go sort of too light or anything because I'm using a stronger lip. Place that in there. Sometimes the particles separate but um as you can see on the whole it's delicate pretty it's definitely festive right okay a little bit of my favorite moonstone becca shimmering skin perfecter just to lift up my complexion um, on the cheekbone here and i'm just going to run it across and under my brow Mm, that's nice. I just love the shade of this. I love the paleness. The Beauty Pie and the Metz Factor one are also nice. You get so much product in this one though, don't you? Um, I just love those pale champagne colours. Until I'm working with a sort of maybe Asian or much darker skin, black skin, then I'll go a little bit warmer. But for most skins, I tend to use this lovely sort of pale champagne colour. Okay, fine. So I'm going to block my lips. And I'm going to use a little bit of my Dr. Perricone Insta Blur just over my top lip. I just feel more confident with that over my top lip if I'm wearing any colour. Smudge that concealer. It's just the red nose, isn't it? Seasonal red nose. Just put that there, lighten that up a little bit. And I'm going to set that with a powder now because that seems to have settled in. 
I'm going to use the um, Hourglass Ambient Powder. Again, such beautiful fine powders. And I'm going to use it with a very small brush just because I want to be really particular where I place it. If I use it with a whole brush, I'm just going to mattify my skin. And with that foundation that I use, it's already semi-matte. Um, I need to be careful that I don't overload it. And then just over my top lip, just to set the Insta Blur. And then if my lips are matte, it's um, much less obvious the lines around my mouth. If I'm very kind of dewy and balmy around my top lip, you can see the bumps on my lips a little bit more. So next, Makeup by Mario. Um, he's a lovely man, isn't he? Kim Kardashian's makeup artist. Very genuine soul, I think, when I watch him. Um, and he has created an amazing line of makeup. And this is his lip palette. Now, it's probably more for makeup artists than it is for sort of general use, but let me tell you, it's so nice to be able to play with lipstick. And if you like the texture of this, which I do, I was a little bit like, oh, they feel a bit small. Not sure if they're gonna feel a bit like, you know, those sort of lipsticks that look great in a set, but then when you try them on, it's not as luxurious as a lipstick. No, they're really, really lovely, creamy and soft, similar to the sort of Lisa Eldridge and Pat McGrath finishes, actually. But what they have here, what he has here, are the primary colours. So for me at work, I can make a lipstick really lovely and pastel-y if I'm going for sort of a 60s vibe or, you know, summer pastel look. The yellow, which I've really been using quite a lot, um, for um, adding warmth to a lipstick. So again, if I'm working on a darker skin, that's nice, or if it's gone a little bit cool. Um, the black's amazing for creating. I'm gonna add a little bit of that with the um, I'm going to try and shape my lips for you to kind of show you how colour alone can actually shape. And then adding blue to a red makes it much cooler and deeper and great sort of for creating plummy shades. So if you're feeling a little bit artistic, then um, I would say definitely invest. The textures are lovely. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of how maybe like the black and the blue work. Um, so I'll go in with this sort of corally red first, so that I've got a little bit of scope um, on going a little bit darker. So I'm just obviously using the lip brush in here. See? Rub together. It's always a really, really good test of how good the pigment is that you can rub it together and you get a nice solid amount of colour. The lip brush is nice too, as you would expect, right? He wouldn't want anything that was less than perfect. So this is a great kind of like corally summer orangey red. And as you can see now, and I hope that you do see that with the way that I work, I want you to see that this is wrong with what I'm wearing because it's too bright and what this dress needs is something a little bit more richer and luxurious. Um, because sometimes what I find with women is that they have a selection of lipsticks and they put it on, they look at their lips, they look at themselves, they go, oh, I'm not really sure. But it's always quite nice to just step back and think, actually, is that a bit too summery? Is that the right kind of shade? So I'm going to go in with a little bit of the darker red here, just on the outside. So just either side, and that gives a nice graduation of colour. Quite nice, isn't it, like an ombre? I'm going to rub it together. Just use the flat side of the cotton bud. Now, I don't expect you to be doing this at all, but I just thought it would be fun uh, to show how just playing with colour makes all the difference. I love that little bit of orange there. I'm gonna keep it like that. So let's go in with the black. Come on, let's just go straight in with the black and we'll see how the colors morph together. So I'm sort of just going to go over the darker red. Mmm. I tell you what, for me, just doing this now, and I'm gonna speed it up for you so it's, um. You have to sit there and watch me put lipstick on for ages, but for me, just watching these collars morph together is really relaxing. 
and I'm not a lover of painting my own face, which is ridiculous I have this channel, but it's a means to an end, isn't it? It's a means to, to meet you guys and to learn so much as I do from you all. Oh, I'm loving the way this colour's going. I'm going to go in with a little bit more black. See, that's my red. That's my red. Oh, it's so nice. And what's also good to notice is that um, you can see how much time I've been playing with my lips just for the pure fact of enjoying the colours morphing together. But there isn't much build up on my lip and that's what's lovely about this texture. So you can play with the colours. It's not too oily, whereas some lipsticks can be a little bit greasy and slippy and then the colours don't mix together. Should we just put a little blue in? Let's just see what the blue does. Well, the blue will make it cooler and more plummy. Very vampy, love it. I just think my own opinion on myself is that if I'm sort of glamming up, I quite like um, a deeper red rather than a brighter red. I like the orangey reds and I'm sort of being more casual, but I just think there's something quite lovely about this sort of like beautiful like 1920s plummy lip. That's much darker than I'd ever anticipated going. And I hope you agree. Mm. Yeah, very, very nice. I'm going to put a tiny bit of the orange, which is the first one that I put in, just in the centre here. See, that just makes a real subtle difference. I just love how the colours build up, but they don't, tend, the lipstick's not slipping. Now, I'm going to take my concealer again put it on my hand and just for my own sort of personal security in terms of just the colour, don't bite on the tissue, just press the tissue over. Oh look, <laughs> that's a lovely texture. I'm meaning look, it doesn't come off on the tissue which is great so it's not spreading. Take a little concealer brush with a flat edge and just go under your lip line. You see how that just sharpens that up a little bit. and then just down the cupid's bow like that. Lovely, and I think I can go in with a little bit more pink now. Yeah, and that also sort of takes the sort of vampishness out of it, doesn't it? Um, just adding, I want to make sure I've got anything on my fingers, yeah. Oh, I absolutely love this. I feel really comfortable in this lipstick. It doesn't feel like it's wearing me or I'm wearing it. Which, what would it, which way would it be? I'm wearing it? Oh, who cares? It feels comfortable. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that works with the dress. So there we are. That's my Christmas look if I choose to um, dress up, which I probably will actually. Um, just a nice bit of colour on the lips and nice sparkly lids. I hope you like it and thank you so much for sharing. Um, this year with me you've been amazing it's been lovely to be able to communicate with you all across the world I cannot tell you how much I appreciate all your messages from Switzerland from America from Australia I mean it's incredible and it's incredible it just really blows my mind um, thank you so much for all your lovely comments and support and um, I look forward to sharing more of my knowledge with you guys and having and continuing the conversation into next year. Have a lovely, lovely Christmas. Have a safe, happy new year and I'll see you in January. Bye for now.